John Calvin on Psalm 26. Judge me, O Lord, for I have walked in mine integrity. I have trusted also in the Lord, therefore I shall not slide. Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my reins and my heart. For thy loving kindness is before me, and I have walked in thy truth. I have not sat with vain persons, neither will I go in with dissemblers. I have hated the congregation of evildoers, and will not sit with the wicked. I will wash my hands in innocency, so will I compass thine altar, O Lord, that I may publish with the voice of thanksgiving, and tell of all thy wondrous works. Lord, I have loved the habitation of thy house, and the place where thine honor dwelleth. Gather not my soul with sinners, nor my life with bloody men, in whose hands is wish mischief, and their right hand is full of bribes. But as for me, I will walk in mine integrity. Redeem me, and be merciful unto me. My foot standeth in an even place. In the congregations will I bless the Lord. I will not sit with deceitful men, nor do I consort with hypocrites. David denies that he had any intercourse with vain and deceitful men, and certainly the best remedy to recall and save us from the assembly of the wicked is to fix our eyes upon God's good, God's goodness. For he who walks in the confidence of God's protection, committing all events to his providence, will never imitate their deceitfulness. Do not take away my soul along with sinners, my life with bloodthirsty men. Having now affirmed his innocence, David has recourse again to prayer and call upon God to defend him. At first sight, indeed, it appears strange to pray that God would not involve a righteous man in the same destruction with the wicked, but God, with paternal indulgence, allows us freedom in prayer that his people may themselves in this way correct their anxieties and overcome the fears with which they are tempted. David, when he conceived this supplication, in order to free himself from anxiety and fear, placed before his eyes the righteous judgment of God, to whom nothing is more abhorrent than to mingle good and bad together without distinction. This was the objection stated by Abraham in Genesis 18, verse 25, quote, That be far from you to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be as the wicked, that be far from you, unquote. Let us remember, therefore, that these forms of prayer are dictated by the Holy Spirit in order that the faithful may unhesitatingly assure themselves that God still sits in inquisition upon every man's case in order to give righteous judgment at last. My feet stand on level ground. In the great assembly I will praise the Lord. As David knew that it was the hand of God alone which enabled him to stand, he therefore addresses himself to the exercise of praise and thanksgiving. Nor does he merely say that he will acknowledge in private the goodness of God bestowed upon him, but in public also, that the assemblies of God's people may be witnesses of it. It is highly necessary that every one should publicly celebrate his experience of the grace of God as an example to others to confide in him.